I'll readily admit that genealogy is not my thing. Elaine does a great job of researching our family tree and of knowing who married whom and what they did and where they went and all of those details. And I'm glad that it's an interest of hers and of others because without knowing those details, we wouldn't necessarily know the story as well. But since it's not really my thing, not details that I keep in mind, when Linda asked me the other day how many generations there are from Adam to Abraham, I readily admitted I have no clue. However, I could set my Bible software off to research the task for me and find out. So, here is a picture of Abraham's family tree. Granted, it's small, and probably you can't see the names of the characters or even the characters themselves, depending on the on the size of screen that you've got. So, we'll start from the top. There's Adam, and then Seth, and then Enosh, and then Kenan, and Mahalalel, and then Jared, and then Enoch, then Methuselah, then Lamech, then Noah, that's nine generations from Adam, then Shem, Arpashad, then Shela, then Eber, then Peleg, then Ru, then Serug, then Nahor, then Terah, then Abraham. That's another ten generations. So, nineteen generations in total. Now, while it may not be easy for me to remember all of those details, I relate better to the time frame that this might have taken place in. And so again, from the Logos Bible software, we've got this graphic. It has a timeline of different biblical events. The call of Abraham is placed somewhere between 2140 and 1925 of before the Common Era. And creation is dated anywhere between 21, or sorry, 4142 and 3760 of before the Common Era. So, going with the with some of those figures, the shortest time frame that it could probably be would be around 1,620 years between Adam and Abraham, which would be the equivalent of between the 400s and now. Imagine how much has changed in that time frame. Certainly, a long time has passed between our reading for last week, when we read for September the 13th about creation, and this reading about Abram or Abraham. And as I've said before, I do appreciate the people who look at genealogy, because without it, we would miss some important details and not understand things in the same way. The story goes that Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Through Isaac, we eventually get to King David, and through King David, we eventually get to Jesus. However, not many of us have looked through Ishmael's genealogy. This is from a website called The Spiritual Life. Ishmael in Islam is regarded as a prophet, is associated with Mecca, and is an ancestor to Muhammad. One of the questions that I have, though, is why the split between Ishmael and Isaac? Why are these two so important figures, descendants of the same father, so split from one another. Well, 
Ishmael was the firstborn, and he was born to Hagar. This from Genesis 16. Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. Isaac, though, was the second born, and born to Sarai, or Sarah. From Genesis 21, the Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, as if 86 wasn't old enough, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah, Sarah bore him. So, again, we've got this family, we've got Abraham with two sons from two different mothers. What happened? In a nutshell, Sarah got jealous. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son. For the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. Now, Abraham didn't like the idea. And the story goes on to tell us that God says it'll be okay. So a little bit later, Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. Hardly a good family dynamic. The Bible is full of stories of strained family relations, or of what we might even call now dysfunctional families. Which leads me to the questions of today. Has jealousy ever brought the end of a relationship for you? It could be that you were the one who was jealous, or the one who was the recipient of the jealousy. And the other question, are there any unresolved family fights? Hopefully ones that haven't lasted generations, but maybe there are that have lasted years or decades, something that still needs to be resolved. Take some time now to answer those questions and drop me a note. Let's explore relationships and find ways to bring people together so that we're not talking thousands of years and things still being strained from different branches of one family. I'll see you again in a few days. Until then, peace and blessings to you.